October 31st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ezekiel chapters 15 and 16 from the Old Testament. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, of all the woody branches among the trees of the forest, what happens to the wood of the vine? Can wood be taken from it to make anything useful? Or can anyone make a peg from it to hang things on? No, it is thrown in the fire for fuel. When the fire has burned up both ends of it, and it is charred in the middle, will it be useful for anything? Indeed, if it was not made into anything useful when it was whole, how much less can it be made into anything when the fire has burned it up and it is charred? Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, like the wood of the vine is among the trees of the forest, which I have provided as fuel for the fire, so I will provide the residents of Jerusalem as fuel. I will set my face against them. Although they have escaped from the fire, the fire will still consume them. Then you will know that I am the Lord, when I set my face against them. I will make the land desolate because they have acted unfaithfully, declares the Sovereign Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, confront Jerusalem with her abominable practices and say, This is what the Sovereign Lord says to Jerusalem. Your origin and your birth were in the land of the Canaanites. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. As for your birth, on the day you were born, your umbilical cord was not cut, nor were you washed in water. You were certainly not rubbed down with salt nor wrapped with blankets. No eye took pity on you to do even one of these things for you to spare you. You were thrown out into the open field because you were detested on the day you were born. I passed by you and saw you kicking around helplessly in your blood. I said to you as you lay there in your blood, live. I said to you as you lay there in your blood, live. I made you plentiful like sprouts in a field. You grew tall and came of age so that you could wear jewelry. Your breast had formed and your hair had grown, but you were still naked and bare. Then I passed by you and watched you, noticing that you had reached the age for love. I spread my cloak over you and covered your nakedness. I swore a solemn oath to you and entered into a marriage covenant with you, declares the Sovereign Lord and you became mine. Then I bathed you in water, washed the blood off you, and anointed you with fragrant oil. I dressed you in embroidered clothing and put fine leather sandals on your feet. I wrapped you with fine linen and covered you with silk. I adorned you with jewelry. I put bracelets on your hands and a necklace around your neck. I put a ring in your nose, earrings on your ears, and a beautiful crown on your head. You were adorned with gold and silver, while your clothing was of fine linen, silk, and embroidery. You ate the finest flour, honey, and olive oil. You became extremely beautiful and attained the position of royalty. Your fame spread among the nations because of your beauty. Your beauty was perfect because of the splendor which I bestowed on you, declares the Sovereign Lord. But you trusted in your beauty and capitalized on your fame by becoming a prostitute. You offered your sexual favors to every man who passed by so that your beauty became his. You took some of your clothing and made for yourself decorated high places. You engaged in prostitution on them. You went to him to become his. You also took your beautiful jewelry made of my gold and my silver I had given to you and made for yourself male images and engaged in prostitution with them. You took your embroidered clothing and used it to cover them. You offered my olive oil and my incense to them. As for my food that I gave you, the fine flour, olive oil, and honey I fed you, you placed it before them as a soothing aroma. That is exactly what happened, declares the Sovereign Lord. You took your sons and your daughters whom you bore to me, and you sacrificed them as food for the idols to eat. As if your prostitution, not enough, you slaughtered my children and sacrificed them to the idols. And with all your abominable practices and prostitution, you did not remember the days of your youth, when you were naked and bare, kicking around in your blood. 
After all your evil, woe, woe to you, declares the sovereign Lord. You built yourself a chamber and put up a pavilion in every public square. At the head of every street you erected your pavilion, and you disgraced your beauty when you spread your legs to every passerby and multiplied your promiscuity. You engaged in prostitution with the Egyptians, your sexually aroused neighbors, multiplying your promiscuity and provoking me to anger. So see here, I have stretched out my hand against you and cut off your rations. I have delivered you into the power of those who hate you, the daughters of the Philistines, who were ashamed by your obscene conduct. You engaged in prostitution with the Assyrians because your sexual desires were insatiable. You prostituted yourself with them and yet you were still not satisfied. Then you multiplied your promiscuity to the land of merchants, Babylonia, but you were not satisfied there either. How sick is your heart, declares the Sovereign Lord, when you perform all of these acts, the deeds of a bold prostitute. When you built your chamber at the head of every street and put up your pavilion in every public square, you were not like a prostitute because you scoffed at payment. Adulterous wife who prefers strangers instead of her own husband. All prostitutes receive payment, but instead you give gifts to every one of your lovers. You bribe them to come to you from all around for your sexual favors. You were different from other prostitutes because no one solicited you. When you gave payment and no payment was given to you, you became the opposite. Therefore, O prostitute, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because your lust was poured out and your nakedness was uncovered in your prostitution with your lovers, and because of all your detestable idols and because of the blood of your children you have given to them, therefore take note, I am about to gather all your lovers whom you enjoyed, both all those you loved and all those you hated. I will gather them against you from all around and I will expose your nakedness to them and they will see all your nakedness. I will punish you as an adulteress and murderer deserves. I will avenge your bloody deeds with furious rage. I will give you into their hands and they will destroy your chambers and tear down your pavilions. They will strip you of your clothing and take your beautiful jewelry and leave you naked and bare. They will summon a mob who will stone you and hack you in pieces with their swords. They will burn down your houses and execute judgments on you in front of many women. Thus I will put a stop to your prostitution and you will no longer give gifts to your clients. I will exhaust my rage on you and then my fury will turn from you. I will calm down and no longer be angry. Because you did not remember the days of your youth, and have enraged me with all these deeds, I hereby repay you for what you have done, declares the Sovereign Lord. Have you not engaged in prostitution on top of all your other abominable practices? Observe, everyone who quotes Proverbs will quote this proverb about you. Like mother, like daughter. You are the daughter of your mother who detested her husband and her sons, and you are the sister of your sisters, who detested their husbands and their sons. Your mother was a Hittite, and your father an Amorite. Your older sister was Samaria, who lived north of you with your daughters, and your younger sister, who lived south of you, was Sodom with her daughters. Have you not copied their behavior and practiced their abominable deeds? In a short time you become even more depraved in all your conduct than they were. As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, your sister Sodom and her daughters never behaved as wickedly as you and your daughters have behaved. See here, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters had majesty, abundance of food, and enjoyed carefree ease, but they did not help the poor and needy. They were haughty and practiced abominable deeds before me. Therefore, when I saw it, I removed them. Samaria has not committed half the sins you have. You have done more abominable deeds than they did. You have made your sisters appear righteous with all the abominable things you have done. So now bear your disgrace because you have given your sisters reason to justify their behavior. 
because the sins you have committed were more abominable than those of your sisters. They have become more righteous than you. So now be ashamed and bear the disgrace of making your sisters appear righteous. I will restore their fortunes, the fortunes of Sodom and her daughters, and the fortunes of Samaria and her daughters, along with your fortunes among them so that you may bear your disgrace and be ashamed of all you have done in consoling them. As for your sister, Sodom and her daughters will be restored to their former status. Samaria and her daughters will be restored to their former status, and you and your daughters will be restored to your former status. In your days of majesty, was not Sodom your sister a byword in your mouth? Before your evil was exposed... Now you have become an object of scorn to the daughters of Aram and all those around her and to the daughters of the Philistines, those all around you who despise you. You must bear your punishment for your obscene conduct and your abominable practices, declares the Lord. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will deal with you according to what you have done when you despised your oath by breaking your covenant. Yet I will remember the covenant I made with you in the days of your youth, and I will establish a lasting covenant with you. Then you will remember your conduct and be ashamed when you receive your older and younger sisters. I will give them to you as daughters, but not on account of my covenant with you. I will establish my covenant with you, and then you will know that I am the Lord." Then you will remember, be ashamed, and remain silent when I make atonement for all you have done, declares the Sovereign Lord. God, this particular chapter in the book of Ezekiel, although one of the more well-known chapters uh, of this particular book, is also the one that's so hard on so many levels for me to read um, and I'm still learning from it and probably will for the rest of my life first and foremost I just struggle with the idea of if I can't even be a good bride or obedient to you how in the world am I going to become a good Christian wife to to a man that you choose for me and that really concerns me because I I work, as you know, I work really hard on being obedient to you and I continually fall short of that and obviously beyond grateful for the forgiveness of those sins through your son's death on the cross. But it makes me feel like I'll never be good enough. And I then go on to read how not only is this wife in this scenario which is really your people but this wife is not only being disobedient to her husband or your people in this case being obedient to you but she's being unfaithful and she's cheating on her husband um, or your people are cheating on you with idols and multiple idols so it would be m multiple partners and then you go on to say something that probably bothers me more than anything is as opposed to most prostitutes who take payment she's not only giving it away but she's paying people to to sleep with her to have sex with her and I think about our idols our idols of comfort and titles and brands and affluence and ego and relationships and and how we pay for those things we pay for them obviously with money in order to have those type of status symbols but we also pay for them with time just the basic time it took us to earn that money to buy those particular things and I think about all the time it took to earn that money and then the intentional spending of that money on our comforts um, our material possessions our entertainment in relationships uh, whatever that looks like for our comfort. And then I equate that to what you're talking about. That all that time spent earning money to then turn around and spend it on our idols. All that time could be used for you and your kingdom. And that money 
what money we have been blessed to earn by you should also be used for your kingdom. It was interesting. I was having a conversation today with one of my youth kids and sadly he's very much in that spot where I was uh, at his age where the world seems very attractive very sparkly and and the world has sold him a bill of goods that he can have the the good job and the beautiful wife and the fancy car and the in the big house and I think that is something that the world and and the devil tries to sell all of us and he's right there in the midst of all of it and he was talking about different things today including the car he wants to get and different things and I just stopped him and I said I said can I tell you something and it's the truth and I realize it may not mean a whole lot right now but maybe sometime in the future it will I said you know my past you know what I had and you know where I'm at now I said I will tell you honestly <laughs> that if I had to do it over again I would wish that I was not wealthy I would wish that I wasn't well known and had fame in my life I would wish for those trips where I traveled multiple places in the world to not exist on my scorecard I would wish for all the things I bought with that money to not have happened and he didn't say anything for a second which is surprising because he talks a lot and then he said really are you being serious with me and I said yes I said I truly regret all that time and all that money that is now wasted I said if you think about it all that time I spent working towards the American dream and all that money I spent do you know how hard it is for me to now realize that that money could have saved somebody's life through food that would have been provided for them that while I was eating in five-star restaurants somebody else was starving to death I wasn't eating something that was basic I was in full American arrogance of the American dream and I was completely in this story the prostitute that you're talking about that not only was giving herself away to everybody but was paying for that to happen and I hope at some point that those words made sense to him or will make sense to him but I still struggle to this day of how much of my life I've wasted how much of my money I've wasted on things that eternally don't matter and I know that you bought me back that even though I had done all of these horrid things that Ezekiel just talks about in his particular story here even though I had done all those things you still bought me back you still restored me and for some strange reason you now allow me to work within your kingdom and help your people God I'm always in awe of that process of a love I don't understand of forgiveness I don't understand of grace and mercy but when I read stories like this it hit not only way too close to home but they are home past the front door that was my life and I worked so hard now for it to not be my life but there are still times when the world intercedes and I find myself wasting time on the world spending money on worldly things and I know you must be so disappointed in those times God I ask that you just make it clear to us that we are here for the eternal reward we're not here for these temporary rewards that the earth and the world and the devil try to entice us with those things are just going to burn up in the fire they are so temporary but at the time they seem so important to spend money on to spend time on 
to exhaust emotions on. God, I want everything to be for you. I want my time to be for you. I want my money to be for you. I want my heart and emotions to be for you. God, I want to be faithful to you. I want to be thankful for the blessings of restoring me, of forgiving me, of clothing me, feeding me, giving me a place to live. I never want to take those for granted. And I never want to be this person that's the person in your story. God, continue to work on my vine and trim away any dead parts that don't need to be there. All the parts of the world that I used to think were important. So that I can be obedient to you. I can be faithful to you. Thank you for your lasting covenant with us. Something we don't deserve. But something that is, without a doubt, the best blessing we've ever received. In your son's name I pray. Amen.